Welcome back to Tabletop Salt. I'm Ross, and today I'm going to continue my segments on analysing the Chaos Space Marine Codex. Today I'm going to speak about the trusty old Chaos Rhino. Uh, you know, the sort of age old, you know, transport for our power armoured friends. It does offer them a little bit more flexibility, you know, uh, manoeuvrability and also protection. So, yeah, quite an iconic unit because it's been around for so long. So how this works is what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the stats of the Chaos Rhino in the Codex, look at its war gear and special abilities. I'll then speak a wee bit about sort of its sort of weapons. I usually do weapon and suggested roll loadout. So what I'm going to do in this one as it's predominantly a transport is something different. Is I'm going to speak about sort of the units and which ones work well with it in a transport. Speak about its weapon options if possible. Uh, speak about uh, legion traits if possible, uh, psychic abilities and stratagems that might be of use to the Chaos Rhino. With that let's have a quick look at the codex uh, stats for the Rhino. So its movement is star meaning as we suffer more wounds it does change which is obviously very very important. At full efficiency this is 6 to 10 wounds it is movement 12, uh, 3 to 5 wounds is 6 so it's halved which is really bad and then one to two wounds is three, which is tragic. So you want to make sure, obviously, full wounds as much as possible and power on down to where you need to be. Weapon skill six plus. Well, at the end of the day, this thing's trying to run you over. Uh, you know, it's not going to hit very often. But yeah, you know, six plus, it can now attack, which in the past it really couldn't. Uh, sort of. Uh, Bliss skill is star, so at full efficiency is 3 plus, goes down to 4 plus at 3 to 5 wounds, and then 5 plus at uh, 1 to 2 wounds. Not so bored about that one, it's not the most fearsome of things with weapons. <coughs> it does okay. So I'm not so bored about its blister skill uh, deteriorating. Strength 6, because it's a vehicle, toughness 7. Which is not bad, I mean, we're not getting tough to say, we're not Imperial Knight or Land Raider, but we're not that far off, apparently. Ten wounds, which is okay. Uh, when it comes to transports and things, especially lighter ones such as the Rhino, uh, I can accept it being at about ten wounds, I think that's not bad. Obviously, Focused Fire will shred it, you know. Uh, attacks is star, so that changes as well. Full efficiency, three. Uh, Mid-efficiency, uh, mid D3. And one. You're really not going to hit with this thing very often. You don't really want it in combat to cause damage. Uh, so the sort of attack side is no problem. Leadership 8 really shouldn't play much into effect unless there's special abilities or psychic abilities that require you to use leaderships, then yeah, that might be possible. And then a 3 plus save, which is fine. You know, if you ask for a 2 plus save, don't. That's not needed for the Rhino. So as it stands wise I'd probably say that's kind of what I'd expect from a Chaos Rhino. In terms of war gear uh, availability, it comes stock with one combi bolter, which is all fine, and may take a Havoc launcher or one additional combi weapon from the combi weapon list, which is a bit of an interesting on that one depending on how you like to play your Rhinos. I will talk about weapons and war gear uh, later on. It also has several abilities, one of them is self repair, so roll a d6 at the start of each of your turn, on a 6 this model heals one wound. Very easily forgotten, but also kind of handy if you've got multiple rhinos, recovering a wound may not seem a lot, especially on a 6, but it can make a huge, huge difference, especially if you are taking points, etc, or if you've got a unit inside them, that single wound can make all the difference. On a 6 it's kind of difficult, but it can make, you know, a big advantage. Smoke launchers, which is probably the most important thing, is once per game, instead of shooting any weapons in the shooting phase, this model can use its smoke launchers. Until the next shooting phase, your opponent must subtract one from all hit rolls for ranged weapons that target this vehicle. Uh, probably the most important rule when it does come to Rhino, because uh, you, you, the Rhino really just wants to you know, get up front and get to its position where it needs to be, whether that be, you know, working as a hindrance or a threat, you know, to target points or to get units that are occupied inside to the place they need to be. It needs to survive, so having minus one to hit on it instead of shooting is really, really good, because its shooting is not that great, depending on what you put on it. Uh, so yeah, great. Then you've got explodes, if this model is reduced to zero wounds, uh, roll a d6 before removing it from the battlefield, and before any embarked models disembark, on a 6 it explodes. 
uh, and each unit within six inches suffers D3 mortal wounds. So large radius explosion, uh, you know, it's not like a one, two, three, it's a six, you know, bigger ones obviously being like 12, etc. There's not many of them. Uh, so suffer D3 mortal wounds. Your standard explosion, explosion thing, uh, it's what you'd expect from the Chaos Rhino. So that's everything in the Codex. Uh, what I'm going to speak about now is maybe a bit more detail on my thoughts, the loadouts and the role of the Chaos Rhino within sort of your army. So, thing to know about the Chaos Rhinos, and Rhinos in general I feel, since uh, 7th, is that they have gone up in uh, points, which is okay because for what their role is, which is durability and manoeuvrability for your, your units, I feel that it's fine how much they've gone up by if it had been in the past what they were, because uh, I think sometimes they were dirt cheap. I think that would be a bit ridiculous, so it's nice that they have gone up a wee bit in points and I feel that they're okay where they are. Uh, what interesting, what's interesting is that the difference of loadouts depending on your playstyle. However, let's not be fooled in this. You know, the Rhino is about getting its cargo where it needs to be, or at least in my playstyles, that's where I, I predominantly try and go for. So I think I'll quickly speak about the sort of units that I think best benefit being inside a Rhino. Uh, if there's other ones that you think, yeah, no, they actually work better, please comment below. I'll quickly cover quite a few of these units. So characters, characters, characters. So cover this one quickly because you know there's a lot of units to mention and I could go into each character in detail but I'll try and go into them very very quickly. Uh, there's certain characters that want to be in the presence in the forefront of the battle and again making sure they have more mobility is absolutely essential. So you've got you, uh, guys like Karn who wants to get into fray and do what he does best which is tear people apart. Lucius is also the same, though probably doesn't tear apart as much, but has a bigger aura to help other close combat units. Uh, David might not like that because he likes to be quite aggressive with Lucius as well, uh, you know, but you know, Karn does tear things up better. Uh, Huron is fun, but you need to give up an extra slot for his Madra, so he essentially takes up two slots in a Chaos Rhino rather than one from the other guys. Uh, Chaos Lord is very handy for combat units because he does have uh, the reroll ones, which is excellent. Uh, if, in case he's not on your backfield. Chaos Sorcerer for spells. Dark Apostle and Exalted Champion are one that a lot of people are actually having a really good time with. So if they take in uh, their slots as well, they take up two slots, but it does allow you a lot of uh, reroll hits and I think reroll wounds as well for units that get buffed by these two. So you can certainly see a big advantage if you take both of them and say uh, a Corn Berserker unit and you, you go a big unit of Corn Berserker with the Exalted Champion and the Dark Apostle, they jump out with them as well and as long as they're still in the aura range they can cause a whole mess of carnage. So those characters I think it's important when you do have a team inside there, kind of nice to think about the characters that will go along for the ride. Next up, uh, unit wise, uh, Chaos Space Marines, not bad but not great, the, the general Chaos Space Marines. Get into rapid fire and special weapon range which is not bad or get them into critical points where they need to be to you know, get objectives. Uh, but the Rhino itself can also take objectives, just that the Chaos Space Marines will have their sort of objectives secured, sort of uh, rule, I forget what it's called off the top of my head. Uh, the Spoilers of the Galaxy, where basically they get a bit more of a preference. <coughs> I like fielding when it is going to be Chaos Space Marines in a Rhino. I like to, and I'm not taking any characters in there, I like to field them in two units of five rather than ten. Uh, I just feel that's a bit better, a bit more cover the field, you're less threatened, more morale and focused fire. Uh, I think I covered that in my Chaos Space Moon video, it was a long time ago, uh, but I like, you know, two units with their special weapons, two units of five in there and then split off and do what they do best. So yeah, they are not bad in there as well. Uh, the big one though, Corn Berserkers, this is a pretty safe bet when it comes to Rhino occupants. Uh, let's not kid ourselves, these guys want to get into combat and shred people apart and they don't want to get damaged while getting there. So, you know, Berserkers are really, really good for Rhinos. Uh, I've been on the receiving end of a mass Rhino rush full of Berserkers, Karn, and oh boy did it hurt, I mean he just went forwards, this was like early 8th edition, uh, I think it was against Rich, and uh, he just piled on forwards with all these Rhinos filled with Berserkers, launched all the smoke launchers and then my ad mech were like cool step back as much as I can but you just covered half the field and uh, at least try and bring out one of those rhinos I failed 
uh, and he then jumped out and tore me apart. It was awesome combat because uh, Cole almost killed Karn, which was hilarious, but then I got greedy and failed. Uh, that's another point on that one. Uh, what I'm trying to say on that one is, yeah, yeah, it can hurt because those guys then shut me down and tore me apart. So Berserkers and Rhinos, be scared. Take out that Rhino before it gets too close and don't let Berserkers get you because they're a pain. Uh, next up is Rubrics. Have you heard of Warp Fly Flamers? I mean, Rubrics and Warp Flamers just got a point reduction and, and they hurt and they want to get close to you because once they get in range, oh boy, do Warp Flamers really, really hurt. I'm playing about with a bit more, you know, I play a wee bit of Thousand Suns and I will be playing about with Warp Flamers a wee bit uh, to see what they do. Expensive, but man, do they burn. So yeah, having Rubrics and Rhino to get them where they need to burn, very good. Plague Marines and Noise Marines, lazy to pile them into both, uh, but I feel I could go on a wee bit talking about all the units etc and I have covered them in previous videos more or less. Uh, Plague Marines are durable as is and things like blank, bl uh, Blight Launchers work quite well at range, so do they need to be in a transport? Uh, they do have their, their combat elements such as Flail of Corruption which is a really good weapon, so yeah they can benefit from combat in that regard. Noise Marines I think work best as a range unit, so in general I don't see transport being so key for them, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, they do have two attacks apiece so you can gear them up to be more combat orientated and their Legion trait does favour that if you go Emperor's Children, but I just feel with Play Marines and Noise Marines that they're more of ranged capabilities and maybe don't need to spend the points on the transport. Chosen, a uh, great range of special com uh, combi and melee weapons, uh, you know, you really want to get them into rapid fire range, especially for your, uh, say, plasma or melee on occasion, yeah, pretty good, you, you might fill them out with uh, loads of special weapons, charge down and phew, kill. <coughs> Possessed, I've used these and ran them in Huron a lot in early 8th edition, uh, when uh, I first started Chaos Space Marines and I was running them in Rhinos, chuck them down the field. They've lost a little, they've fallen slightly out of favour, uh, you know, but it gives you a bit of variety in combat and shredding because you can't answer everything with Corn Berserkers, though they do the job really, really well. So, yeah, Possessed can go in there, that can be a lot of fun. Havox, you know, so you decide you ain't the kind of Chaos Spaceman player that wants to hang back with last cannons, heavy bolters and missile launchers, you want more plasma guns, flamers and melt guns. Honestly, I'm leaning towards maybe just taking them with last cannons, heavy bolters, missile launchers instead of going up front. But you know what? You do you. If you want to go with special weapons and charge down the field with Havocs, sure. Why not? Uh, I just want some more heavy weapons. Uh, so yeah, sorry I went on for a wee bit there, but I still feel that you know transport is possibly the biggest part when it does come to a Rhino, talking about the key units that do fit inside it. Uh, and uh, there is quite a few viable options. Uh, obviously I'm leaning heavily towards Corn Berserkers with a character, but I love to hear about other people's view on how they sort of stock out Rhino if you do at all. Another part is talking about the firepower. <coughs> Sorry. Now I'm not convinced in putting firepower on a Rhino as such. Usually I like to advance then smoke launcher, but I will talk about a few of the loadouts that may be applicable. So the first one is the launcher option, which is combi weapon, uh, combi bolter, and havoc launcher. So the combi bolter works well. Uh, get four shots at close range, which you know you want to move forward. So yeah, that's kind of good. The havoc launcher, I'm personally not convinced by. It has no AP, random shots, which I hate, uh, and only a strength higher than the combi bolter itself. Uh, does also have minus one to hit when you move and costs a few points. Personally, I would go down the route of other combi weapons. Because you can add on an R combi weapon instead of a Havoc Launcher. Speaking of, the merits of combi. A uh, combi bit bolter with any other combi weapon. So all the combi weapons actually have a fair bit of merit when it comes to the Rhino. After all, you want to get up and close and get the most out of your combi weapons. And combi weapons generally do quite well when they get up and close. Combi bolter times two. In uh, rapid fire range, that's eight co uh, bolt shots which is not bad, it's cheap and you know it's a bit of a hindrance, so two combi bolters, pretty nice. Combi fl flamer, probably the best option, it's cheap, you can fire the co combi part, uh, which is okay, you know, fire the combi part and then you've got the other combi part, and then you can fire the flamer and it's not hindered by firing both combi parts, which is really, really good. 
So you get, I think you'd get like six shots there plus D6 from the flavour, I think, if you're enough at a range. So yeah, that's really, really nice. I really like that one. And the flavour, you obviously don't need to roll to it, which is kind of awesome. Combo Melter, uh, well, you have to have mobility to get within Melter range. And a straight shot that does a lot of damage can be a lot of fun. You know, it's not guaranteed, but yeah, can be fun. Combo Plasma, be careful. I mean, plasma is a lot of fun, let's not kid ourselves. But if you shoot the combi part, and then, so this is something that's interesting. You know, if you fire the combi part, and you overheat it, uh, and then you fire the combi bolter part, you will slay yourself, and as far as I know, you will slay yourself on a one or two, uh, which is dangerous, you know, because you, uh, the combi, if you shoot the combi bolter, it's minus one to it on both. So you will die on a one or two. Now, correct me if I'm wrong in this. It's maybe in like the big FAQ and I missed it. Uh, but I'm interested to hear what you think on this one. Interesting to know, if you move the Rhino, you move it, you can disembark, which is fine, you know, you can disembark, you have to wait to next turn, then you disembark, then you move the Rhino. But if you destroy yourself in your own shooting phase, so you overcharge the plasma, roll a one or a two uh, in your own shooting phase and cause yourself to emergency disembark, so you've moved the rhino, blown yourself up, corn berserkers come out. You can then theoretically charge with said corn berserkers. Am I wrong in that? Am I wrong? You know, just it's an expensive way to, you know, get an emergency deployment. You know, you 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 know you charge up the field, uh, and then you fire, kill yourself, and then go ha ha surprise corn berserkers. Uh, let me know if you can still do that. I think at one point you could but they might have FAQ'd it because that's ridiculous. Uh, and you might kill some of your berserkers in the, the process, but hey, skulls are skulls. So yeah, let me know if that one works, because then I might, for fun, take combi plasma on some of my like, world eater rhinos and go, ha ha, here I am. But <laughs> just for fun. Uh, last way you can do uh, transports, you know, lastly what transports also do pretty fairly well is harassment. Want to charge that unit of berserkers, but don't want to suffer the Overwatch. Say it's like you know orc boys or something, and you're like, I can throw out all the dice and chop you apart, but I really don't want you, say, putting out. I think uh, if it's shooter boys, they've got like assault two, 60 shots into the corn berserkers, and you're like, oh, that might kill one or two of them, which is a pain. Throw in the rhino first, soak up the Overwatch. If you manage to make that charge, then the the orc boys can't Overwatch into the corn berserkers, which they're going to be annoyed about. Um, so yeah, you know, can help your units, you know, sort of go in unscathed. I think it's a very common Dark Elder tactic, and that's where I read of people who are like, cool, gonna fire a raider at you now, you know, that unit's jumped out, here comes a raider to hold you down. But you can usually do it with rhinos as well, you know, just charge in and take the overwatch, unless it's like, you know, they hit stupidly and they're super strong, then maybe not, but I think uh, to take small arms fire might be worth it. Legion traits, so we come to that part again where space marine kind of units, including scale space marines, don't get legion traits on their vehicles and stuff, it's only on infantry, bikers, demon princes and hell brutes. So yeah, but I like to talk about them just because there's some shenanigans we could have pulled off if we did get vehicles like other armies do, but we do not. Uh, Alpha legion, hidden in plain sight, I would have loved this like a lot. Uh, don't get first turn, it's okay, you're probably minus one tick because you're so far away. Yeah, that's fine, that's all good. Get first turn, move forward, you may be not in optimal range yet, but you can activate smoke launchers and if you're in position correctly, be minus two to hit and, you know, be a bit more of a threatening unit. Tragic we can't get that because on rhinos that would be awful, that would be fun. Uh, Renegade chapters, Dark Raiders, this allows units with this trait to advance and charge in the same turn. So why would you want a transport want to advance and charge? Because you want to be a pain in the ass. Uh, worried about the small arms firing the berserkers, as I mentioned before. No problem, charge the rhino in first, absorb them, and having that sort of advance just guarantees you've got more mobility. Night Lords, terror tactics, models in an enemy unit must, uh, models in an enemy unit must subtract one from leadership characteristics for each unit with this trait within six inches uh, of theirs to a maximum of minus three. So fear bomb rhinos everywhere, you know, they've got big bay, you know, big area aura because they're a big unit. Uh, just fear bomb rhinos, they're going to be like, I'm going to run you over. 
Nightlord style, style, though they tend to be a bit sneakier than throwing rhinos at people. Uh, you know, so yeah, that could be fun, you know, just to have loads of rhinos like scaring the enemy uh, and minus the morale with these huge rhinos all over the place in well position would be awesome. But alas, no Legion traits for us. Psychic abilities though, we do benefit from a few of them. Uh, so I'll speak with Miasma of Pestilence, Swap charge 6 if manifested, select a Nurgle Heretic Star Sheet within 18 inches of the Psyker. Till the start of your next Psyker phase, your opponent must subtract 1 from all hit rolls that target the unit. Damn it Rhino, why won't you die? Uh, having minus 1 to hit uh, would, you know, with this is awesome. Uh, with possibly minus 2 to hit if you've activated small launchers will really make this a real pain in the ass to move. Shamey can be Alpha Legion to be minus three to, to hit, but we ain't those kind of monsters, you know, Elder are, you know, they're minus million to hit. Elder. Uh, delightful Agonies, Warp Charge 6, Mark of Slanesh. If manifested, select a visible Slanesh, Heretic Starship unit within 18 inches of the Psyker. Until the start of the next Psychic phase, roll a D6. Each time the model loses a wound or on a 5+, plus, they do not lose a wound. Another survivability option, Rhino's already tough uh, to move, you know, unless you've contract fire, I mean, tough in reasonability. Uh, and, you know, making these things, you know, if they've got good units in them, quite a target that people want to move. So, you know, having that 5 plus to ignore wounds is kind of good. Uh, is it the best? But it will depend on the cargo and everything you want to achieve with it. But it's nice to know you can add on more survivability. Lastly is Warp Time. Warp Charge 6, if manifested, click, pick a Retic Sarsh unit within 3 inches of the Psyker. That unit can move as if it was the movement phase. You cannot use Warp Time on a unit more than once per Psychic phase. This is probably much more suitable units than Warp Time than the Rhino, but sometimes you need to reach where you want to go, you know, and I don't mean that in life, but I mean that possibly in life as well. But with the Rhino, you know, you need to get where you need to be in the battlefield, uh, to unload that unit inside or take the objective. So yeah, not bad. You know, if you're going, I need to cover the battlefield really, really quick. Warp ch charge uh, time is there. Movement of 12, you're gonna move far twice. Really, really not bad. And lastly is stratagems. Okay, blasphemous machines cost one command point. Use a stratagem just before a retic stars vehicle attacks in the shooting phase. Until the end of the phase, the vehicle can ignore the penalties for moving and firing heavy weapons or for advancing and firing assault weapons. I was really struggling to find a stratagem here. I mean, a lot of Chaos Ones, looking through them, focus on infantry or specific units. This stratagem means that you can basically move and shoot your, your Havoc launcher at, like, you know, normal ballistic skill. Is it worth it? Absolutely not. Uh, I don't rate the Havoc Launcher in general because uh, it's too many random shots. If I had a lot more reliable shots, I'd be a bit more pleased. But here, I've got to mention at least Astragium. That's the only one I could see that viably work with a Rhino. But generally, I'm going to say, no, nah, there isn't really any Astragiums for Rhinos. And I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that. So that is my talk on the Chaos Rhino. I think when it comes down to, we all know what it needs to do. It needs to move units, it needs to capture points. Don't expect for it to kill. It's either a hindrance or a, a transport unit. It does its role perfectly fine, and I, I, I think it's perfectly good for what it does. Uh, yeah, that's. I, I don't really know what I can say other than it's a very, very decent, moderate, uh, dedicated transport for the Chaos Space Marines. So thanks again for watching, please comment, share, like and subscribe. Interesting to hear what people think of Chaos Rhinos now. Do you think they're more too expensive for what they actually do? Is there too many mobility options in the game in general that uh, the Chaos Rhino is not so much viable? Uh, very, very interested to hear what people think on those notes. Uh, certainly when we had like turn one deep strikes, you know, mobility from Rhino was, uh, was a bit more difficult, but now maybe with a few FAQs, has the role changed? So yeah, thanks again. Uh, please check us out on social media and also on Patreon if you want to support us so we bring more stuff and also our projects that we are working on. We have new armies coming. Uh, looking forward to sharing them hopefully very soon. And we'll see you then. So thanks again and we'll see you on another Tim Top Salt Battle Report.